Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for coming to our talk. My name is Nima Caviani, and I'm an engineer with IBM and also uh, a commuter to Cloud Foundry's Diego. And my name is Adrian Zankic. I'm an engineer at Pivotal. I was a former anchor of the infrastructure team, which maintains console release, and I'm the current anchor of the MySQL Galera team. Okay, so the title of our talk is Unlocking Diego, and we're gonna talk about how we identified um, basically some of the flakiness that we had in Cloud Foundry, and how we actually um, provided um, robustness and re reliability by fixing the problems that we issue, especially with using console. So I think um, Eric's talk um, made it a lot easier for us to give this talk because of the great overview that he did on Diego. But um, to give you some background, Diego is the runtime and the scheduler for Cloud Foundry. So essentially, um, the role of Diego is to receive jobs from Cloud Controller and then um, run those jobs and monitor jo those jobs and make sure that those jobs are running. The important point about Diego is that it's a distributed system in nature, which basically means that similar to any other distributed system, its components need to be discoverable and highly available. So in Cloud Foundry, in order to provide that discoverability and high availability, we decided to use console, mostly because console actually has features that allow for discoverability and high availability. But as we did uh, further analysis of uh, Cloud Foundry deployments, and as we learned more about how console works, we realized that console may not necessarily be the best choice for Cloud Foundry. And um, we decided to kind of transition away from it. But before I tell you how we transitioned away, I'm gonna hand it to Adrian, who's gonna talk about um, what console is and how console and Cloud Foundry actually have problems with one another. Yeah, so some of you may not know what console actually is and what it does in the system. You'll just see that there's three VMs popping up extra in your deployment that you have to have that are notoriously broken. So what console is, is it's a clustered system that offers discoverability through DNS. So this allows system components to register routes to this clustered system that then other components in the system could query to discover other systems, uh, components in your system. So, you know, you can find where your UAA is or database, Diego, whatever. Um, it provides health checks on those services so that if a node dies or whatever, it will deregister that route so you can't actually go to a dead route anymore. It offers a key value store for just storing whatever you want in there. Um, and it's based on the Raft algorithm. So we're gonna talk more about Raft um, in the future for people who don't know what that is. So how do we use console in Cloud Foundry? So um, as I mentioned just now, <laughs> we use it for service discovery mainly, right? So uh, different components register themselves, other components can find those. We use it as a system state store, so some metadata information is stored in the key value store of console. And it's also used primarily by Diego and a few other components for distributed locking so that we could achieve the active-passive availability model that Eric had mentioned in his previous talk. So basically what this means is, let's say you have n number of system components and you want one that's the active node. So that one is maybe a web server that's accepting traffic. And if that node dies for some reason, goes away, a passive node can then take a lock and any component that wants to talk to that system Using this lock, we'll uh, discover it through console, so you only go to the active node, uh, so you only talk to one at a time. So why is console an issue for Cloud Foundry? So it's a software we all know and love called Bosch. So Bosch and console do not play well with each other. So Bosch does a lot of things very, very well. It handles stateless services amazingly well, gives us everything that we love about automatic uh, operating system upgrades, software upgrades, all that kind of stuff. However, one area that Bosch could use some improvement in is stateful services, and even more so, clustered stateful services. So console is a double whammy of stuff that doesn't work super well with Bosch, and we've seen a lot of pain around orchestrating this. So um, the reason why they're so painful is Raft. So console uses the Raft algorithm, which if you don't know what Raft is, that's okay. I'm gonna talk just briefly about it. So Raft is a consensus algorithm. So consensus is achieved when multiple servers agree on a given leader. 
It achieves consensus in a fault-tolerant way. Console implements its own Raft algorithm. So um, I'm going to talk about Raft very briefly here. So here's a typical Raft cluster that has not been initialized yet. So this is five nodes that don't know or talk to each other. So when you have a cluster and you know, no one knows about each other, what happens is uh, nodes will heartbeat to each other. And when they find that there's no leader, then one of the nodes will elect itself as a candidate and send out a candidate message to all the other nodes. And it will start an election. So what happens is every other node that receives that candidate uh, message will then respond back with a vote to the first candidate that it sees. When there are enough votes in the cluster to maintain quorum, as they call it, then a leader gets elected. So then all the nodes agree on a single leader. And that leader is the person who replicates log information, all that kind of stuff, to every other follower in the cluster. So this will happen uh, over the lifetime of the cluster and the leader in the cluster. So if a leader dies, goes away, whatever, Raft is supposed to pick up where that leader died, elect a new one, and just keep going forward. And hopefully all of your log messages were replicated everywhere, so then you should be able to just pick up and keep going. So one of the problems with Raft console and Cloud Foundry is what's called a split brain, right? So a split brain and a Raft cluster is when you have a partition between one set of nodes and another set of nodes. So let's say you're doing a deployment, something fails, there's a network, isolation, whatever. Uh, one node may elect a leader and talk to some amount of nodes, and another node may elect a completely different leader and talk to another set of nodes there. So then you have two separate sets of data, two separate leaders that they should all be unified. And I don't want to go too much into the details about how console works, but basically there's clients on each system, and then there's a uh, central cluster. And then each client will talk to the cluster, get routes about everybody else, and register new routes. So then if half of your system is talking to one side of a cluster, and the other part is talking to another part of the cluster, then one side of your system can't talk to the other side because it simply just cannot even get the routes to that other side. And this is a big problem uh, in Cloud Foundry. So, a really common situation for um, split brains and how all this stuff breaks down is during Bosch deploys or network uh, isolations. So what will happen is Bosch wants to uh, roll a VM, which coincidentally is always a leader, right? So then it takes down the leader. Raft should elect a new leader and uh, the cluster should be happy. So most of the time that happens. But sometimes, let's say a leader goes down, the remainder of the cluster takes too long to enact a new leader, the previous leader comes back up, it knew that it used to be the leader, and there's no leader, so it tries to participate in another election, a bunch of bad stuff happens. And sometimes when a leader will come back up, it might have data in the future or behind where the current cluster is, and if you've ever orchestrated a console cluster in Cloud Foundry, then you will know that there is that dreaded log not in sync error message, which basically means go in there, wipe out all the data, stop everything, and start it all back up from scratch. That is when console gets into a situation where it can't trust its data anymore. So uh, console is a consistent system, and when we don't know who the source of truth is anymore, then you're just completely screwed at that point. All right, so next we're going to talk about how console failures affect Cloud Foundry, and in particular Diego, because Diego is one of the primary um, users of console in the Cloud Foundry ecosystem. So let's just start with an overview of Diego. Uh, I'm going to be very brief about it because I think Eric did a great job. But essentially, when Cloud Controller wants to run a job, it contacts BBS or the bulletin board system in Diego, which is the forefront of communications with all other components in Diego. And it sends the job information as well as the resource requirements. BBS then passes that information to the auctioneer, which is the scheduler in the environment. It receives the information for the job, the resources, and then consults all the uh, cell VMs for their available resources in order to decide, okay, where to schedule the job. And once that is identified, it uh, communicates with the rep, which is the process representing a cell VM, passes the job information to that um, cell, 
and then the rep launches a container, uh, pulls the code for that job into that container and starts the container and then monitors its, ex its execution and then reports back to BBS. Another key component in Diego is the router meter. And what the router meter do does is that once the job is up and running, it actually takes the route to that job and makes it available to the outside world by communicating it to the Go router. So that's how your applications, once you push an application to Cloud Foundry, it becomes accessible from outside. So Diego um, uses console for high availability for service discovery and for data store. Um, as Adrian mentioned, the model of high availability that is implemented is Diego is an active passive model where the active instance in a family of components is the one that is receiving the request and then handles the request. And all the passive instances are basically sitting there idle, waiting for the active instance to go down for them to take over. Um, so service discovery is done in such a way that the active instance in a family of components registers itself under a domain name. So for all the other components in Diego, when they want to contact uh, like a given component, they use that domain name. And that domain name then gets resolved to the address of the active instance of you know, um, a family of components, whether it's BBS or Auctioneer or anything else. So out of all components in Diego, the BBS, the Auctioneer, the reps, and the router meter are the ones that heavily utilize um, console. So um, BBS, auctioneer, and router meter use console for service discovery, for high availability, and for distributed lock that they use for the active passive high availability uh, model. And the rep uses um, console in order to provide information about the cell that it manages, including some metadata about the resources that it has available. So if console fails and goes down, then the way it affects BBS is that there is not going to be any active instance of BBS available. So essentially, no other component can talk to Diego, right? And then the DNS record fails to update because we use console DNS for providing the DNS service and the discovery. So that becomes unavailable. And then essentially, Diego becomes unreachable. When console fails for auctioneer, auctioneer cannot schedule any new jobs because again, there is no active instance of auctioneer that can take over that responsibility. When it becomes available for the rep, the rep cannot provide information about the cell that it manages to the rest of the system. So if all reps lose communication with console, essentially what happens is that you don't have any cells available in order to schedule any new job. But Probably the most important of all these components is the router meter. Because as I mentioned, the responsibility of router meter is to make your jobs or your applications available to the outside world by constantly refreshing the routes that make those uh, processes available. So if the router meter goes down, basically the routes to the applications expire and Cloud Foundry and Diego start dropping those routes and essentially you lose all communications with your applications and that's quite catastrophic for Cloud Foundry because it fails at its doing its primary job, which is basically running those applications. So in order to solve these problems, we decided that okay, it's probably wiser for Cloud Foundry to replace console. And the way we decided to do it, we started looking at different components in order to decide how we actually want to replace it. For BBS and Auctioneer, if you remember, I mentioned that we use console for service discovery and for, for availability. So for high availability and the distributed locking mechanism that we had implemented on top of console, we decided to move from console to a relational database and use it for providing that distributed locking mechanism. Well, the good thing with using a relational database is that it's not, well, the, the availability of a relational database is not based on a raft algorithm. So we're not going to have all the split brain and other issues that we mentioned when, we, when Bosch actually has to manage a raft-based system. So we implemented Locket, which is a service that runs on top of a relational database, and that manages all the distributed locking of the components. So that way, the active instance can still register itself as the active instance, and all the other passive instances can wait and listen for the active instance to potentially go down for them to take over. The important thing is that for service discovery, we still are using console DNS. That thing is still not gone away. But the long-term plan is that we're going to replace it with Bosch DNS, and Adrian is going to talk about uh, how Bosch DNS is going to solve some of the problems later on in this talk. <laughs> 
So for the RAD emitter, I think Eric also uh, covered this uh, for a little bit, but the initial architecture that we had, or the old architecture that we had for Cloud Foundry, was that we had a single instance of RAD emitter managing routes for all the applications in Cloud Foundry. And that was a single point of failure, essentially. Once that route emitter went down, then all the routes start, would start dropping, and then we would lose routability to all the apps. So we moved to a, a more distributed architecture, moving away from a global route emitter to local route emitters. So in this new architecture, a local instance of route emitter gets deployed alongside um, a rep on each cell in the deployment. And this way, because we've kind of split the resp responsibilities of updating routes across multiple route emitters, if uh, a cell goes down or a route emitter goes down, you essentially lose routability only to the instances of your application that are deployed on that cell. And that way, if you follow the best practices of deploying applications on Cloud Foundry, which involves having multiple cells and multiple instances of your application, then hopefully you have other instances of your applications running on other cells whose route emitters are still available, and that way your apps can remain reachable. So we've kind of moved away from that single point of failure by distributing route emitters across multiple cells. For the reps, also as I mentioned, we use console in order to provide metadata information about the cells. And we realized that we can use um, the Lockheed mechanism in order to report the same availability. So reps also use Lockheed in order to register their presences and provide their metadata information for the rest of uh, Diego components um, in a relational database, yet rather than using console. So with that, I hand it back to um, Adrian, who's gonna talk about service discovery and Bosch DNS. Yeah, so as Nima was mentioning, uh, you know, we're moving a lot of locks, things like that, into relational databases. Things that are a little bit more easier to orchestrate, but we're still using console for service discovery, right? So at this point, we've decoupled um, the active passive failover uh, out of console and service discovery. So we're still using that now. So um, in the future, uh, the Bosch team is working on a, a new feature called Bosch DNS. So this is going to be Bosch native. DNS. Um, you can find it at Cloud Foundry or the Cloud Foundry organization GitHub called DNS-release. This is still an alpha release and it's a work in progress, but this is sort of the direction that we're going. So, you know, a lot of people might be wondering, well, why are we writing our own DNS server? Why are we doing all this stuff, right? So one of the core problems that we we're facing with console is that we're using it as primarily a service discovery platform, but Due to its consistency guarantees and its reliance on Raft, um, it's hard to orchestrate, and it may not necessarily actually be what you want for service discovery, right? So we're using a consistent system for service discovery that if that consistent system goes down for whatever reason, we completely lose routes and service discovery. So instead, what we want is more of an available system, and that's what Bosch DNS aims to be. So with Bosch DNS, um, each VM in your deployment or across deployments already knows about all of the VMs in your deployment through the Bosch director. So the Bosch director is going to give an instance information about all of the other nodes so that it could craft DNS messages or DNS records and talk to each other. So the reason why this is a better option for Cloud Foundry is let's say if your you know, Bosch director goes down, you have a network partition, you have some catastrophic failure and part of your deployment, anything can happen, right? Every node will have its own local copy of routes that will never get wiped out unless the Bosch director specifically gives it an update. So let's say half of your deployment just got partitioned or you lost an AZ, anything like that. Your components will still be able to talk to the nodes that it knows about. And Bosch DNS will eventually um, have healthiness so that it'll know that, hey, I can't talk to this other VM anymore. I know that it's there, or that it used to be there. I'm just gonna stop trying for now, but at least I have some information about what's left in my deployment and who I can talk to. So um, that's sort of you know the goal behind Bosch DNS. Um, we're eventually gonna roll this out. It's still very much a work in progress, but you can check it out at this uh, Git repo. So uh, just to wrap this up, um, we've, you know, through, you know, orchestrating and deploying Cloud Foundries, we've determined that console is not necessarily a good fit for Cloud Foundry. So I want to take this opportunity to say that uh, we've worked very closely with HashiCorp and the console team. They've been doing such a great job. Console is a really awesome piece of software. 
So just because it's not a good fit for Cloud Foundry doesn't mean that it's bad or it doesn't work. Console works fantastically. We just have problems orchestrating it in our environments. So, you know, if you need a service discovery platform that you want distributed locking, stuff like that, and maybe you have some different type of architecture, console might work very well for you. I recommend checking it out. Um, it's super fast. It's a great piece of software. So I'd just like to thank the console team for all the work you know, that they've done and everything. Like, console is actually a really good piece of software. So, um, you know, as Nima mentioned, you know, we are moving uh, to simpler technology in our platform, right? So, uh, we used to have an etcd cluster in addition to a console cluster, which etcd also uses Raft. So, we used to have two separate, completely different Raft clusters. And if you were you still using an older style Diego release, and you even had a third Raft cluster, so in a Cloud Foundry deployment, you could have three different Raft clusters all at the same time, which if anybody has operated a Cloud Foundry, you know that that is not a fun time. Uh, so instead, we're switching over to relational databases, which we've been using for a very long time. We know how to orchestrate those well. There's many different options be between you know, internal Cloud Foundry things, things like RDS, whatever. Um, those are a lot more stable. Uh, and we're using Locket on top of SQL systems for that. Um, Bosch DNS, which I talked about some, is going to replace console DNS. So we're still using console for DNS currently, but in the future, that will likely not be the case. And this will allow us to have a more available service discovery system within Cloud Foundry that should be more resilient to partial system outages and also make the deployment story a little bit um, easier. And also, you should be able to remove three VMs from your Cloud Foundry deployment that were just sitting there kind of just dying all the time. So uh, we're going to publish a blog post about this talk that's going to go more into detail about um, changes in Diego, why we're making those changes, common issues with console, how we got around those, stuff like that. So uh, we'll post that blog post and tweet it out, do all that kind of jazz. Uh, you can check us out on Twitter. There's our Twitter handles. You can follow us or not. No big deal, no pressure. Uh, you know. And that's it. Thanks. I think we can take some questions. Yeah. Yes? So is this like uh, for Bosch DNS, would this kind of be like a local host record for every single system? So uh, there's, uh, so the uh, first version of Bosch DNS is exactly what you're talking about. So it would write records into hosts. It, was, it would periodically refresh that, but you couldn't really uh, query the director for, give me records in the zone or healthiness or anything like that. So Bosch DNS is actually going to be a uh, DNS server that you can co-locate on a job that the Bosch agent will lay down a file that has information about all the other uh, nodes in your deployment and also other deployments on your system. And then that would bind to a local um, IP address that's meant on the loopback interface. Then you can ask it for DNS uh, records. And there's sort of like a query syntax that you can say, uh, you know, give me the records of nodes in this zone or things like that. So currently it's in hosts, but eventually it won't write into hosts anymore and it'll actually be a fully functioning DNS server. Um, I think it really um, comes down to how the database is managed. I think the problem with console is that it's a lot easier when you have a wrap-based um, system to get into a split partition. Um, if you use something like RDS as your backing data store, you don't even need to care about the distributed, like the split, um, the split situation or the split brain case. Um, because I think it's generally, Bosch is not going to be fiddling around with it. It's going to be like outside the, um, the ecosystem of Cloud Foundry and how it's managed. So the type of um, like, um, consistency that it provides kind of ensures you that if you actually write and lock um, basically 
the active instance, once it writes to the database and locks its presence in the database, it's going to be there. And the other components are not necessarily going to take over. Or, yes, exactly. Or so also, too, just, you know, if your database goes down in Cloud Foundry, you've got a lot of problems, right? And uh, orchestrating a database is a lot easier than orchestrating Raft clusters, right? So you are absolutely right. If your database goes down, you're going to have problems. But that's also the case today. If your database goes down, you're going to have a bad time no matter what happens. So this is just one more thing that's going to go bad if your database goes down. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we can take this outside after the thing. Are there any more questions? All right. I think that's it. Thank you cool. very much. Yeah, thank you.